Okay, so uh, we begin with the word of prayer. Mm. Dear loving Heavenly Father, we invite your spirit to be with us in your presence to, to bless and to guide in this here study. Help me to present it in a way that is to your glory. And may I be a vessel that uh, can be emptied of self and filled with the Holy Spirit. We pray for those listening, that they too can get a, a deeper understanding concerning the chronology of the book of Judges. And we give thanks for the light that you've been sharing concerning this year chronology in recent weeks and years. We ask your blessing upon this here meeting. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, so this is the seventh presentation. The last presentation I talked about uh, further evidence to help establish the 1533 BC date as the date that the Exodus occurred. Then we looked at the period of Joshua and the elders who outlived him. We looked at what it says concerning Eleazar and Phineas and how we could uh, place their chronology, uh, the chronology relating to their times. We looked at that and uh, we've seen that Eleazar probably died just soon after Joshua and then Phineas became the high priest and this is generally around the time when the elders who outlived Joshua occurred and there was a, a time then when the tribe of Judah and they joined with Simeon and they fought against a uh, king of Bezek who uh, had removed the thumbs and toes of the 70 kings. And then later on, there probably would have been events then occurring that are recorded in 17 to 21 of the Book of Judges, <laughs> where we have Benjamites uh, fighting against the other tribes. We have the incident of the Danites as well, um, there's idolatry going on, but I believe this is generally a period where the Israelites served the Lord in general. There was some instances where that wasn't the case, but Phineas uh, was the high priest during that their time and, uh, and sort of uh, then when them people died uh, who outlived Joshua, you would have had Cushion Rethathium oppress the Israelites and then Othniel comes in. And I had been discussing uh, about Othniel, I was just about to get into that and then we, we broke off the, for a time. But this presentation is called the Book of Cr Judges Chronology Overviews. And I'm just going to continue now initially with what the Bible says about Othniel. And then we'll just go let's look at some of the big pictures of the book of Judges. We'll look at what Usher says about it. And we'll have just some other considerations um, that we can discern from other scriptures concerning this year period. So in uh, Joshua chapter 15, verses 16 to 17, we had uh, covered an aspect of this. We are, we are told there, that Caleb said that he that smiteth Kirjath Sephar and taketh it to him will I give Aksa, my daughter, to wife, and Othniel, the son of Kenes, the brother of Caleb, took it, and he gives him Aksa, his daughter, to wife. So in the context, this event occurs in relation to Caleb defeating the giants that abode in Hebron when he was 85 years old, being 46 years after the exodus from Egypt. Othniel is not reckoned with the elders 
who had been amongst those who had crossed the Red Sea, for they had died prior to Israel being subdued by the king of Mesopotamia. Therefore, Othniel would have to have been at least 45 years younger than Caleb. And this is uh, the next paragraph here is dealing with this uh, understanding of Caleb being an older brother to Othniel. So if that was the case, uh, a surface reading would seem to render them having different fathers, as Caleb was the son of Jephunneh, and Othniel is recorded as being the son of Kenaz. Albert Barnes suggests that the expression son of Kenaz is an equivalent for the Kezanite, uh, referenced in Joshua 14, verse 6, where it says, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kezanite. John Gill observes that Othniel was an uncle to Caleb's daughter and that such marriages were forbidden. Leviticus 18, verse 14 states, Thou shalt not, un thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's brother. Thou shalt not approach to his wife. She is thine aunt. So, in that case, uh, Caleb's daughter would be marrying her uncle, and that would be against the Levitical uh, code, even though it's, it's sort of switched around, you know, it's rather than a, a nephew marrying um, an aunt, in, the, in this case, in Leviticus. Also suggested is the word brother, sometimes signifies only a kinsman or a near relation, and not precisely a brother. It is not Othniel that is called the brother of Caleb, but Kenes, who was the father of Othniel. So that Caleb was Othniel's uncle, and Ash, Aksa, and Othniel were brother's children, or first cousins, between whom uh, the marriage was allowed. So it does talk about Othniel, uh, the son of Kenes, the brother of Caleb. So in that there context, it's saying it's not Othniel is the brother of Caleb, it's Kenes is the, the brother of Caleb. So that's uh, just put, touching on that point. I don't know if you have any thoughts about that. Have you ever thought about it? No? Well, I thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when we look at some of these explanations, I mean, they're all plausible. Um, so I don't think that it, it's, it's that important. The thing is, it, it, it doesn't really affect the chronology. The chronology is still correct, no matter which solution you choose. Mm -hmm. OK, so I have like a prior drawing with my light pen here. And uh, this is the chronology concerning Othniel. Just trying to gauge his age. So I believe uh, that Othniel is probably born in this year period of the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. It's certainly after the time the 12 spies go into uh, Canaan, <clears throat> and then you have that pronouncement, those between uh, the young up to 19 years old are okay to enter the next, uh, enter the, the Canaan after that time, but uh, so that's, uh, that would be those who would be later called the elders, so Othniel is not considered among, amongst them. So he's going to be born later than that. Uh, if he's going to marry her, sorry, marry uh, Caleb's daughter when Caleb is 85, I'm going to sort of presume he's, he's going to be about 20 years old as a, as a, as a guess there. Maybe, um, I don't know for certain, but this is six years after uh, they've 
entered, crossed the, the River Jordan. And so therefore, Caleb would have been born uh, 14 years before the, the crossing of the River Jordan. And if uh, Joshua was to continue on as, a, as uh, the leader for another 24 years at the most, um, and then the elders for 10 years after that, um, that would make Othniel then, when Cushan, Rithathiam, begins to oppress Israel about the age of uh, 54, and then he begins to judge eight years after that at the age of 62, and he judges for 40 years. So it could be that he's about 100 years old uh, when he dies. So that's uh, just uh, an outline. I'm not too sure about the specifics, but I don't think we're going to be too far away uh, in the chronology of Othniel there. So I want to trace back uh, to uh, from the time of the 300 years of Judges 1126. So due to the unknown number of years that Joshua led Israel, and how long the, is, the elders continued who outlived Joshua, a more accurate chronology could be derived for noting the date of when the 300 years of Judges 11.26 ended, and then working back in time. The following diagram gives an overview of the resulting dates and reveals the chronology, uh, the chronolog chronological alignment issues uh, that occur when we get uh, the beginning of the 300 years as it's approached. So we have here the 300 years, and it begins when the dwelling in Heshbon and Aurora. Uh, but this is going to the end of this period. And the, the, the year 1194 I put in there. And this is when Jephthah begins to fight against the Ammonites. So Prior to that, we had the 18 years of Philistine and Ammonite oppression. We had 22 years of Jer, 23 years of Tola, 3 years of Amalek, uh, 40 years of Gideon and Midian and so forth. And when we get to Othniel, he begins in this here diagram, if we're going to go back, if they are all in line, he would begin to judge in 1505 BC, which is uh, several years prior to 1494 and the 300 years when they would begin. So we think, uh, or I'm suggesting that Ehud is really the, the time period there where things seem to change. Ellen White doesn't comment in, commentate on that 80 year period. But she does seem to confirm a lot of the other time periods. So I am tending to think that they would be pretty much accurate. I tend to, to think this is, uh, this is when Abimelech, for instance, uh, began to rule in 1260 BC. And I think this year we can see a date here that connects to the span of time of 1260 years. The papacy is also said to rule for three and a half years. And then we have Abimelech there uh, ruling for three years. So there's quite a, a similar time period. The papacy was like a, a usurping king. And Abimelech himself, he was the first usurping king of the Israelites. So there's a lot of connections there. And he uh, kills 70 of the sons of of Gideon uh, prior to becoming king. And it's interesting, 70 divides into 1260, 18 times. So you have that 18 and then the 70 there. You can maybe see a connection there to July 18 and just in the, the numbers. Mm -hmm. And um, I have here a diagram, um, just done out with the light pen again. and. Uh, this is 1260 BC. We have Abimelech on the throne, and he's going to 
and it's since reigned for three years. Now, an inclusive count of 1,798 years will take you to 538 AD and the beginning of the 1,260 years where we have the usurper king of the papacy going until 1798. And we have 46 years noted then after that until 1844. And we have just a wee bit more than that if you consider the time period for Gideon and the Midianites that oppressed the Israelites. So we have 47 years at one end and then 46 years at the other. So I'm just going to look at the chronology now of what James Usher does when he looks at this here book of Judges. Um, the diagram here, I just have cut it up into pieces and zoomed in two areas, so we're not just going to look at it as it is there, but that's uh, just what I've done uh, as an overview. And it's, uh, some of it's quite challenging. I find, I don't know, he's making decisions there, I don't know where he's getting his ideas from. So he has the crossing of the River Jordan in 1451, which is 40 years after 1491, which is the date that he places for the Exodus. And he has five years until the land rests from war. And then another year from when uh, the land is divided by lot. So there's no real um, justification, I think, for that. I, I think the land rests for war and then they just divide the land by lot. I think it's something that can be done in a matter of days or weeks. But he has it extended it to another year. In that case, it would still give some support anyway to the um, these here six year period. Um, but I think he has that. I think he would be wrong in, in putting five years there. I would put the both, um, both periods as six years. And then he has an, another uh, year from the land being divided by lot into the cities of refuge being selected. And then another year for Joshua building uh, Tidnaf Sira. And then from there, there's going to be another 30 years uh, for Joshua. And then maybe the elders who outlived Joshua uh, until the oppression of Cushan Rithathium begins. And that ends in 1405. And then he says, Othniel is raised up. And he, he has this here writing um, concerning Judges 3, 9 to 11, uh, which is concerning the 40 years that is mentioned there that the land rests. He says, Usher writes, the land had rest 40 years after the first rest which Joshua procured for them. So that's the 40 years of Othniel. But he doesn't actually mark it. There's no 14, sorry, if it's 1405 is the start of the then 40 years, they should really end in 1365. But in the, the chronology I've looked at him, he doesn't even mention that date. There is an 80 year period to 1325 BC, and that's when uh, Ehud is raised up, but I don't see any 40 year period being mentioned. He has the year 1342, sorry, 1343 BC, for when uh, Eglon oppresses Israel or Moab for 18 years. And um, that would be then 62 years prior to Kushinus of Thames oppression ending and Othniel's being raised up. So it's like uh, 22 years more than what the Bible gives. Have you ever encountered this? No. Um, then after that, there's another 80 year period from when uh, Ehud is raised up. And he, he sort of like uh, Gerto, he has a, a 20 year period then until uh, Jabin oppression begins. And he writes about uh, this here period which says the land addressed 80 years. 
He says the land had rest 40 years after the former rest and deliverance by Othniel. And again, I don't quite understand his logic there. He maybe he's connecting these 40 years as being including uh, Jabin. It seems to be. Um, so Jabin affecting more the northern kingdom and the land in southern Judah area having a rest for 40 years, but not so for the north. Then he has Deborah judging and um, Sisera. His, his armies are defeated. And then there's a period of 33 years until Midian oppression begins. So he's uh, joining together as uh, a period of which is 40 years uh, that we find in Judges chapter 3, verse 9 to 11, I think, uh, for, for Deborah and Barak that talks about the land resting for 40 years. But part of that includes the seven years of oppression uh, by Midian. He says the land rested 40 years after the former rest restored by Ehud. So again, quite a, not really what I would consider. You know. Then there's a, a nine-year period to when Abimelech kills Gideon's sons. That takes us to 1236 BC. So he's putting that nine years in there. Where is he getting that nine years yeah, from? I don't know. He just he just puts it in there somehow. Yeah. Unless it's the addition of what I'm reading of his, but I, I did look at several down PDFs, and one of them had all these here, like it's like the old English that yeah. he would write, and it looked quite more detailed. Well, there was some things on that. For for instance, the new ones that I was looking at yeah. had had the nail jail put the, the nail through Jabin's head. Yeah, instead of uh, Cicero's. But, but in the old English language version, which seems to be more what Usher correct. had wrote, yeah. he had put Cicero. So yeah. it was, that was correct. Usher was correct initially, but someone's changed it to that yeah. made him look as if it was Jabin. So, yeah. so anyway, he has the, the coronation of Abimelech. Yeah, this is quite a mystery. These here, nine years, ten years. So Abimelech kills the sons of Gideon in 1236. Then he has the coronation of Abimelech the following year. And then he's killed two years after that in 1233 BC. And then things are a bit more logical after that. He has uh, the 23, year, 23 years there for Tola, which is... I get that, and then 22 years for Jer. But in looking at Jer there, we see that he adds in part of that the 18 years of Philistine oppression. So he has that at the same time, which I don't see any justification for. And then Jephthah, he marks the six years and so forth. Thereafter that is pretty logical. And then the angel appears to Manoah. So he has Samson coming at Abdon. So I've, I've, uh, my chronology when we get to it is, will be different than this year. I think uh, Samson is sort of uh, around that same time as these here other Ibsam and so forth, but uh, we'll explain that later. So. So we have, of course, the spirit of prophecy that gives us a little bit more insight into some of these things. Um, but I don't think that we can, I mean, we can't establish these things with 100% certainty, right? I mean, mm -hmm. that's sort of the conclusion that we drew. But there are suggestions of, of a chronology that seems the most likely, which I think what we have done, mostly your work, um, makes makes sense it fits things in um it just is a little it's different than other people's solutions but i think part of it is we've used the spirit of prophecy to guide us right mm -hmm. we have some information such yeah. as the 300 years that the ark was in shiloh yes um so you know i'm pretty conf confident that this is most likely the correct 
chronology. Now it's interesting you because you have that 1117 BC when Samson dies collapsing the temple of Dagon, and that's rather intriguing. So, well, this is uh, oh, this is whose? This is Usher's. Oh, this is Usher's. So where do we have that then? It's around there because we have don't we have 1117 in one of our chronologies? I don't think I have it as 1117. Okay, we have something there, right? At least I did. See, that's only 20 years before Saul's anointed. No, is it? No, it's 100, 120 years before Saul's anointed. Okay. Okay. So another question. So um, one of the things you haven't really brought up that we had talked about before, so I know I'm kind of jumping out of this, but when it comes to Usher's chronology and our chronology... Oh, sorry. It's, it's 20, 20 years before Saul's anointed. Okay. So okay. that would be the time of Samuel, I would put that. Okay. But we put Samuel, Samson is in that history of Eli. Yes. Right, not in the history of Samuel. Samuel, um, yes, yeah, slightly after Samson. Yeah, because part of what we're trying to do is show people the problems. But one mm -hmm. of the things that you had started out with was we had Miller's chronology, Usher's, and ours, which mm -hmm. we'll call the biblical chronology. And we had the 153 years difference between Usher's and Miller's. But we also have 111 years difference between ours and Miller's, right? Mm -hmm. And that 111 and the 53 both become significant symbols. So the question is, even when we look at Usher's, um, can we look at something like the 1117 BC for the collapsing of the Temple of Dagon? Can we look at that as, even though it's an incorrect chronology, as a symbol? That's the question. We could explore it. I'm not too sure. I haven't thought about it. I didn't see that until that. That's interesting. But, uh... but we have an incorrect chronology of Miller's, and we take the 153 years as a symbol. Mm -hmm. I think the vagueness of the book of Judges does allow some flexibility mm -hmm. in structures and symbols yeah. that we can find within it. And we had no control over Usher's chronology, no. right? Mm -hmm. So the fact that we have this, in a sense, as a given, and we can see 1117 BC, and we know that 1117 is a symbol of, of July 18th because 11 times 17 is 187. And we have that in the story of Joseph, too. Mm -hmm. And then also we know that the 187th prime number is 1117. So here we see it in Usher's chronology. Even if it's not a correct chronology, it seems to me reasonable to say that that still is a symbol because it's, it's man's attempt to try to... Uh, work out the chronology. It's a well-established chronology. And just like you have, you know, Strong's uh, numbers for the Hebrew words, well, you know, somebody could argue, well, he numbered them wrong. You know, he should have done it this way. And, but the thing is, that's what we had as a given. So as a given, we've been given Usher's chronology. Even the 404 BC, starting at sunset on October 22, is a symbol, even though it's an incorrect chronology. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the way that I would take it. I don't know if that makes sense to you or not. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. Uh, okay, so um, just to clarify, there's a 20-year period given in, to Sa in the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 2, mm -hmm. where it begins with the, the Philistines taking the ark, there's a seven month period, and then, and then there's 20 years that ends when Samuel is invested as a judge. Now them 20 years, I believe, follow pretty closely the time of Samson when he judges, okay. but we'll, we'll get to that. So he has actually Samson being 22 years old when he uh, kills the lion and marries or seeks to marry but he would actually be younger. He would be younger, yes. 
and the Philistines oppressing Israel. He does have that uh, period as when Eli is judging. So there's a bit of overlap there. And uh, and then when Eli dies, at the end of them 40 years, you have, we have them 20 years where the Philistines are still oppressing Israel. So in a sense, that would make that period 60 years. So I would say these here 20 years are part of the 40 years rather than uh, an, an add-on to them. Yeah, so with Usher's chronology here, I mean, we have this Philistine oppression. Um, now, when does, he partic- when does he sort of end it? Is he ending it? Because the ark's taken by the Philistines after Samson collapses the Temple of Dagon, which, mm-hmm. um, so, so where does he end the Philistines? It's going to be when the Lord, the Israel gather at Mizpah, the Lord thunders against the Philistines. So that's one year before Saul's anointed. That doesn't seem reasonable, right? So he's got more than forty years. He's got like sixty. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have any real time when Samson. Samuel's going to judge. Yeah, it's not. So Samuel's going to begin judging then. He has, only has him judging one year. Yeah, which makes no sense. Okay. And and we don't have anything that in the spirit of prophecy that supports what Usher is saying here. It actually doesn't. And and this is an important point about the chronology. So there has always been this assumption in Adventism that Ellen White just uses Usher's chronology. And it's pretty clear that she does not. Um, That she actually has her own chronology. And it's consistent. And uh, the other thing that we would see is when I worked out the chronology, I found that Ellen White's chronology fit more closely with mine than with Usher's. And it definitely doesn't fit with anything like Thiel. And Thiel's chronology, I look at as more... Like, Usher is trying to develop a correct biblical chronology. So is Miller. So are we. And now somebody might argue that Thiel is. But he's starting with a completely different premise. His premise is we need to judge the Bible's chronology or prove it by external chronology, such as Assyria, of which he makes all kinds of wild assumptions and proofs and then basically slaughters the biblical chronology. Just says, these verses that don't agree, I'm just going to cut them out of the Bible. And so I think in your whole idea of approaching the chronology of chronologies, I think you have the right idea, is that God is unfolding these things and his hand is guiding the wheel of, of, these under, of, of the understanding of chronology right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's not that Usher made a bunch of mistakes and we just ignore him. His, he's actually being guided by God in giving us dates to help establish prophecy at the time we need it. And then, you know, Miller adjusts Usher's chronology, but even in there, it's in God's providence. And as we then approach the chronology of chronologies, even though it seems pretentious, but you know what I'm saying, even as we approach that, we can see that it's God's guiding hand clarifying and correcting things from the past, but those things in the past can still be used as symbols. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's quite amazing. I think that's an important insight um, to understanding how God directs and leads his people and how he leads us as individuals in, in developing a Christ-like character. That's why I think we can say um, when in a desire of ages, when Jesus knows that the life of his trusting disciples would be like his, a series of uninterrupted victories, not seen to be such here, but recognized as such in the great hereafter, that we look at things from a perspective different than God. God has look, seen the end from the beginning, how he's leading and guiding us. And he's leading us from a world of sin, from darkness into his marvelous light, and these chronologies are part of that. Okay, thank you for that. Just one final note concerning Usher's chronology here. That he begins 
these here 20 years from when he, they, he kills this here lion, lion and so forth, rather than the, where I would sort of tend to put it is when he uh, slays the thousand Philistines with jawbone of an axe. Thereafter, it tells us that he judged for 20 years. Um, so it could have been that sort of like a similar, could be a year or two difference between them. But anyway, it's, uh, we'll move on. So I wanted to talk about the 20 years as Samson, Samson, Samson as a judge. So an overlap can be identified with the 20 years that Samson judged. This was a portion within the 40 years of Philistine oppression. We are told that Samson judged in Israel in the days of the Philistines 20 years, implying that the days of the 40 years of Philistine oppression so Ellen White, speaking of Samson, states that in the early years of the Philistine oppression, or in other words, soon after when the 40-year period of Philistine oppression had begun, a child was born through whom God designed to humble the power of these mighty foes. She continues, God directed that the future judge and deliverer of Israel should be trained to strict temperance from infancy, just as he was entering upon manhood, so maybe 17, 16, what is that around that age, Samson connected himself with the enemies of Israel. The beginning of manhood would likely relate to his late teenage years. Events thereafter led to Samson slaying 1,000 Philistines with the jawbone of an ass, after which the Israelites made Samson judge, and he ruled Israel for 20 years. These 20 years would then take us towards the end of the 40-year period of oppression, when he then connected himself with Delilah, lost his strength and perished after collapsing the temple of Dagon. He would likely have been in his late 30s when he died. Judges 13 verse 5 tells us, of God's promise that through Samson he would begin to deliver the Israelites out of the hand of the Philistines, thus implying that Samson done his exploits during the 40-year period of the Philistine oppression, but he was not able to totally deliver Israel out of their hand. So taking the the spans of time that we have in the book of Judges. We have a period here indistinct. Joshua is at the most 30 years. We don't know exactly the elders who outlived him. It could be like a 40 year period in total there, uh, including Joshua. And then it's a period of 350 years if you're just going to add them, the judges up and the times of oppression up. And then we have these here 40 years of the Philistines. And I'm placing what we just wrote there concerning Samson within that 40 years of a period. I have here Eli afterwards and then Samuel coming afterward, after Eli. We're not told exactly how long Samuel judges, but there's some indication that we can... Uh, Find out, sorry, you're going to say something? So e Eli, he, I mean, he's in the time of the Philistines, so, mm -hmm. so, so that would have to be also Samson and Eli are in that 40 years, right? Yes. So so, what, yeah, but you're I'm, just looking at the, at the total right now, yes. but you're putting those 20 years with mm -hmm. the 40, but not putting the other 40 with the 40. So what I'm doing here, this is the crossing of the River Jordan in 1493 yeah. B.C., and this is the anointing of Saul in 1097 BC, mm -hmm. and it's a period of 396 years. And so we have here a period of 350 years, if we were just going to take that there. Yeah. And then, which and it can fit in within that 396 years, but we also have to add so, the yeah. times of the Philistines, the times of Eli, 
the times of Samuel, and then the times of Joshua and the elders who I lived in. So I'm just saying yeah. there needs to be a lot of overlap for us to fit this here mm -hmm. into a 396. Yeah. And period. you've already done an overlap with Samson, but you can see here that, that definitely you cannot fit this into mm -hmm. that period. Now, so we know that Miller tried to lengthen that period to fit it in. But then it contradicts statements in the spirit of prophecy, his, as well, you know, not just from, and also the 480 years, but even how he lays out, um, you know, those, those final um, judges, it's not going to fit with what Ellen White says, what Miller says. Um, so, so I think that we're, we have to fit it in there, and I think that, we have to make a case that those two periods of 40 years are the same, just in a different place, different part of Israel. Yes. So I have here just, again, that list of the judges. And I've just totaled up the times of those who were oppressing Israel. I've included Abimelech. Even though he wasn't an external oppressor, oppressor he was an internal oppressor. Uh, that's 114 years. And then if you total the times of the judges, we have a period of 296 years. And I just want to highlight here that in totaling these up, until you get to the 40-year period of the Philistines, there's 350 years. And then we have the 40 years of the, the, the Philistine oppression, which gives the 390. And this sort of connects with what we had read in uh, Ezekiel, chapter 4, verses 4 to 6. There was a prophecy that Ezekiel was prophesying concerning the siege. And he had 40 years for Judah and 390 years uh, for Israel. And like yourself and Usher, they connected uh, this, these here 350 years to the fulfillment of Josiah. And uh, Usher's chronology was wrong about that. I think uh, he, he had the, the 40 years, or 390 years as well, uh, end in uh, five, 85, I think it was, BC, and he, he didn't connect it to the siege at all, mm -hmm. so his chronology was wrong there, but he had the right idea that th there would be 350 years from that prophecy concerning Josiah that we read about in 1 Kings chapter 12 and 13, or 1 Kings chapter 13 anyway, mm -hmm. verse 2 I think, uh, that that there would uh, would then be fulfilled 350 years later. And then from Othniel to Abdon, we have a period there, if we just add up the, the, the judges, there's 40 years, uh, 350 years, and then we have the 40 years of the Philistines. So just taking out uh, the vagueness there in the judges, that we can sort of just, as the spans of time, we can add them all up together. Yeah, and it becomes again a symbol. Yes. Even though... Literally, that's not how it works. Symbolically, it how it's how it works. Mm -hmm. Now, some people will sort of argue that for the 350 and the 40 years of Ezekiel that they're not they don't need to be exact. Or the 70 years Babylonian captivity, it's just a symbol. It doesn't need to be exact. Mm -hmm. um, or the you know the 2300 days or the 70 weeks or things like that. That these are all just symbols, and we're not to look for. Uh, something that's that's actual but I think that's a bad argument I mean just because we can do that here and see the symbols in this doesn't mean that we don't recognize once we had worked out the chronology and saw the actual 350 and 40 years connected with the prophecy of Josiah we would have to say that that is the correct chronology because it's mm -hmm. it's accurate but some people aren't looking for that and, and they think any sort of attempt at finding a chronology is sort of foolishness. And Willie White had this view regarding chronology. He didn't think it was important. We talked about that where 
he makes this argument, well, if it was meant to be, if it was needed, it would be easily understood and everybody would agree, which, of course, if we applied that to everything, then um, I'm not sure if we would have any truth. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just want to discuss an assumption some people make. So uh, concerning the 450 years that we read about in Acts chapter 13, verse 20, if we were to consider the 20 years when Samson judged as separate from the 40 years of Philistine oppression and add it to the running total of the previous table, it would give us a period of 410 years. If we again add to that the 40 years when Eli judged, the chronology appears to support the assumption that about the space of 450 years reached until Samuel the prophet. Yeah, so they have there the 390 up to the Philistine oppression, just add the 20 years of Samson and 40 years of Eli, and that takes us to Samuel. And, um, but again, there's problems when you do that. It's, uh, but to those who aren't sort of diligent in the sense, you know, um, it kind of just seems an easy answer. It seems logical to mm -hmm. them, but they don't really look at other issues. Well, we have to admit, this is an extremely difficult part of biblical chronology. Yes. And, and I never tackled it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I looked at it, became befuddled, you know, just... Mm -hmm. uh, all I knew is that we had the 480 years and that needs to be correct. And I yes. knew that the statement in Acts 13.20 was a misreading of the Greek. Mm -hmm. So so to me, it, it didn't make sense to have to force this in here. And I knew that William Miller's didn't make sense, um, uh, that it m missed out things that contradicted the spirit of prophecy. So I think we have moved towards something that at least we know within a few years how to fit those judges. Mm -hmm. But exactly, I, I don't know if we could prove it, but mm -hmm. I think it, it does work. And we would look at the symbols that we have. So we're just doing the best we can, but it does work. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. So this is just a, a little bit of an analysis from these here numbers that we find here in the book of Judges. Just taking these first four years of the oppressors, we find for each of them, there's another period of eight years, 18 years, 20 years, and seven years within this. So you have eight years there of, of the king of Mesopotamia. You have eight years there for Abdon, 18 years for Eglon, 18 years for the Ammonites and Philistines, 20 years for Jabin, 20 years for Samson, seven years for Midian, seven years for Ibsam. And... Uh, then if you take those which are not repeated and add them up, so you're adding up the three for Abimelech, the Tola, 23, Jair, 22, the six for Jephthah, the 10 for Elon, and the 80 associated with Ehud, it comes to 144. And then we have four periods of 40 years. So there, Othniel, Deborah Barak, Gideon, and the Philistines. And four times 40 is 160, which is 10 times uh, the two periods of eight. Uh, if we take these here first two numbers, eight, and multiply it by 18, it comes to 144. If we add the two periods of 18, which is 36, and multiply it by the two periods of 20, which comes to 40, it comes to 1,440. So you have within there sort of a, quite a few number, potential 144 sort of symbols. Now, the two periods of seven years that we find, 
Um, there's a span, if you add up the years of the judges in between, uh, you have 126 years at either side. So you could have 25, 20 days either side of this, this year, 126 years. So it forms like a type of mirror. And that sort of, to me, connects with the mini mini tegel of Daniel chapter 5, verse 25, where we have a total of 126 shekels. And, and geras, it's uh, 25, 20 geras. Another observation, if we were to put these here, Philistines, you have a 40-year period there at the, uh, the end. And parallel pellet sort of mirror that, in a sense, with the first 40-year period that we find with Othniel and count the number of years in between. It comes to 302. And in prophetic days, this is 10, 8, 7, 108,720. And if we were looking at just the last period, the, the, the last years of the judges, we have Elon, 10, Abdon, 8, Isban, 7, and then Samson, 20. And so if we can just put them sort of numbers together in sort of slightly different order because we'd have Ibsan come after Abdon. Uh, we can f get that number uh, 108,720. 100, okay, so. If, so I have some Ellen White statements just concerning what she says concerning chronology with uh, the period from Midian to GAR. So we had looked at her statements uh, from Othniel to Deborah and Barak before. So concerning Midian, she just quotes what the Bible says, and then after quoting that, Judges 6, verse 1, she writes, Heather to the hand of the oppressor had fallen but lightly on the tribes dwelling east of the Jordan, but in the present calamities, they were the chief sufferers. Uh, so you see there that certain parts of Israel were had it more difficult than other areas. She doesn't mention the, the 40 years associated with Gideon. Uh, concerning Abimelech, she says, the worthless bramble, grasping for honor and destroying that which was better than itself, was a fitting symbol of the vile and cruel Abimelech. For three years, this man's wicked, this wicked man's reign continued, and then the Lord sent trouble among those who had united in an evil course. So there, she's just confirming that Abimelech did indeed reign for three years. For Tola, she says Tola governed Israel 23 years, so that's just very much the same. And then she says Tola was succeeded by Jair. This ruler also feared the Lord and endeavored to maintain his worship among the people. To some extent, during the latter part of Jair's reign, and more generally, after his death, the Israelites again relapsed into idolatry. So she doesn't um, confirm the 22 years, but she just says towards the end of them 22 years, uh, Israel began to apostatize to some extent. So there, um, time wise, or what we like? No, well, I'm just <laughs> in, in the figures. Um, Samuel Cato mentions that there's a seven, one, eight, twenty in the figures of what you were looking at there. Okay, yes, um, um, yes, we have um, this year. Is that what you mean, Eglon, Jabin, and Midian? Um, I'm not sure if that's what he's referring to. I think he's referring more to Ibzan, Elon, Abdon, and Samson in there, the seven, <coughs> one, the seven, ten, eight, oh, twenty, yes. I think. But we're going we're gonna to address that when we do Ibzan, Elon, <laughs> and Abdon. 
But the thing is, we can see that there's the 144,000 symbols, and there's symbols for July 18, 2020, in these, the chronicles, the, the chronology of the judges. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, this was a, a previous diagram. I identified the 300 years of the Arpian in Shiloh. Takes us to one year past, past uh, Jephthah's six year reign, as or judging. So you have a period there of seven years, and that was preceded by 18 years of Philistine oppression. So you could, in some sense, see a one eight followed by a seven there as well. And I um, have this here expanded upon. We have that Philistine oppression 18 years there. The seven years from when Jephthah judges to when Eli dies. And then that's going to be followed by a 20 year period until Samuel is invested as a judge. So you have there 18, 7, 20. And that set up. And uh, we have the 300 years identified there to Heshbon, and then the 300 years to Shiloh when Eli dies. <clears throat> and that's the whole period then we can identify as being 45 years. And previous to that, uh, there was a period of 45 years which included the period when Tola judged and the period when um, Jair judged. So just a time check, is it a, how long? Yes, yeah, um, three minutes. Three minutes? Two or three minutes. Yeah, so I'll maybe not uh, continue on because we're going to deal with Samuel okay. uh, and the chronology. It just takes me a bit more time. I don't want to start it and then. So we'll just close the prayer now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, give thanks for the, the study that we've just had. Give thanks for the insights concerning these here period of judges, the symbols relating to the 144,000 and to July 18, 2020. And we're seeing that uh, through these here studies that you have been leading us, that uh, you are guiding through the affairs of this year movement, through our weaknesses, through our misunderstanding and mistakes, Father. And we seek to be corrected in this year chronology. And uh, we ask that um, further light be revealed to us, that we can be humble servants of you in sharing these few messages. And we ask your blessing upon Theodore as he leads out in the next study. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.